What was it like um, just getting back? I know you've been you've been training with with Kyle Pitts. What was it like just being back in the same building with with all the other, the other teammates you had? It's awesome. I mean, just like sitting down, waiting to do like the media, waiting for my turn, and kind of just like reflecting on the day. Like it was just really cool to, you know, you know, have such great teammates and um, for those years I was at Florida, and now to come back and you know to put on one last show, it felt really cool. You were invited to the combine, but then there was no combine. How much more pressure does that put on today? Because you only really have you know one time to perform in front of um, all these NFL teams. Yeah, I mean, there is added pressure. I mean, because usually, obviously, you get two chances to do um, certain drills. So, you know, you got to make sure you bring your A game. And then for you, what was what did you just need to show today? Um, I don't think scouts are going to be really worried about your 40 time, but what, what did you really need to focus on today? Um, and, and what was your, your point of emphasis? Well, really, I just wanted to show that I'm not just a statue back there, that I can move. Um, I thought I'd, I tested well. I thought my cone drills were uh, solid. And, uh, and also, I just wanted to show that I can you know burst out of the pocket, um, have little uh, movements within the pocket and still be able to deliver an accurate ball consistently and you know I thought I did a pretty good job of that today. Might be cold for a Texas boy but do you see Brian Johnson and say hey maybe the Eagles uh, want to spend a pick on on your former player? <laughs> hey, we'll see I mean I know that draft is crazy and I'll be happy wherever I go. Thanks Kyle. Yes sir. Edgar. Yeah hey Kyle. So, so what do you, what's the biggest thing you took away from your time working with Dan Mullen as a um, quarterback? Just the way that he's able to teach people. I know at a quarterback, as a quarterback at the next level, um, you got to be, you know, as if you weren't the rock of the offense you, before, you definitely are now. Um, and I've just picked up, you know, little things along the way of, you know, how he's able to not necessarily, you know, make something simpler or dumb it down. It's still you know, just as um, complex, but he's still able to teach it um, in a way that you can understand and pick it up faster. So do you keep a look at like where you fit in? I mean, it's only human nature with the conversation with the quarterbacks coming into the draft. It's a pretty illustrious class and you seem to be just on the outside of, of the big name talk. Do you notice that? Do you care? Does it motivate you? Uh, I really don't care, to be honest. I'm sure you're not surprised with that answer. But, no. yeah, I mean, I'll be happy wherever I go. Um, all I can control is what I can control, and, and that's what, uh, what I did today. And, and last thing, Kyle, I mean, it used to be back when, you know, I was growing up that quarterbacks had to wait for a while, and now the NFL, you got guys that they aren't playing by the time – week eights there where people are like oh my god what's wrong with this kid you know mm -hmm. do you, what, how do you look at like the your nfl journey i mean in that respect are you you're going to be happy to wait or you feel like you learned the patience you're going to possibly need here at florida well all i know is as a competitor i mean you can never just be complacent and say oh i'm gonna sit behind this guy for a year and then, and then go like if you're doing if you have that mindset then and you're probably going to get left behind. So, you know, my mindset's never going to change. It's always going to keep the foot on the gas, compete with whoever's in the building. Awesome. Thanks, man. Matt? What are a couple of things that you worked on uh, since the Cotton Bowl to, to kind of prepare for today? Anything in particular? Yeah, I mean, just, you know, quickening up my feet. Um, a lot of you know, cardio, making sure I'm in the best shape of my life. I trimmed down about 15 pounds and just making sure I can move quickly because, you know, obviously the, the NFL game um, is going to be even faster and got to be even quicker, you know, at the quarterback position. And I just really wanted to show that today. What, what are you down to weight wise now? I weighed in today at 236. 236. Um, and, and two more. Um, KT said a minute ago he can throw it 80 or 90 yards, and he said you could attest to that. Is, uh, is that accurate? Um, I'm not sure the, the exact yardage, but I know he can throw it you know, pretty dang far. All right, we'll, we'll go pretty dang far. Um, <laughs> and then the Tampa guy I'm required to ask you uh, if you've had any conversations with the Bucks at this point. Um, you know, I've had a 
the opportunity to talk to you know the majority of teams just throughout this whole process you know there's a lot of zoom calls and um at the end of the day i'll be happy wherever i go thank you Kathy. hey kyle kind of following up on that do you think maybe a situation where you could go in and and sit for a year or two would that be more advantageous or would you want to go in and start somewhere right away you know i'm not really you know i'm not you know going to say one or the other because really i'm just going to have that same mindset no matter what the situation is that you no know, no matter if it's the best quarterback in the league or the worst i'm still going to come in um, and compete with whoever's in the building because that's just you know what i'm going to do thank you buddy go ahead buddy you're on mute sorry Kyle, when you were on the field, though, I'm sure you weren't thinking about much other than getting, making the plays and throwing the ball. <clears throat> but did you have a moment when you thought about this being your last time officially on Florida field? No, I actually haven't thought about that. I mean, I mean maybe just like right before I came up here, just like reflecting on the day, um, you know, with the guys that you know I had the pleasure to play with. Um, but yeah, I mean, when I think about that, just. It is crazy, you know. I'm just, you know, super proud of myself for never giving up through the struggles that I've, you know, faced in my past five years here. Um, and it's crazy that, you know, this is the last time we get to, you know, perform out here. But um, hopefully, it's just the beginning for us. Can you remember your first pass out there? Uh, not necessarily my first pass. I do remember my first spring practice. Um, we were out there, you know, Freddie Swain, Josh Hammond. You know, we were, you know doing our thing. So yeah, I do remember that, that first spring practice in 2016 was you know, as far back as I could pinpoint. Much has been said about your patience. It's not the way you probably anticipated you break into college football, but how did you stay focused all that time playing so little and really didn't know when and if you get in? What did you, I mean, were the times you got real discouraged or what was that like? I mean, obviously it wasn't the easiest of times just to sit there. I mean, no one wants to just sit and watch on game days. Um, so that was tough and it just, um, you know, was motivation for me to keep pushing. And, you know, I had complete trust in my coaches and believed in everything that they were saying you know, as far as, you know, prepare like a starter. And that's what I did every single game because um, you never know what can happen on a Saturday or Saturday night whenever I went in and I just went in and, you know, took advantage of my opportunity you know, back in 2019 and just try to take it from there. Can you take us back one last time to Kentucky game? And here you are, it's late in the third quarter and Felipe goes down and next they say, you're next man up and you go on the field. Tell us what that was like in the experience. You'll never obviously forget and neither will Gator fans. Yeah, I mean, I just remember that being, you know, such a crazy, you know, 20 minutes or so after Felipe went down, it was, you know, very quiet on the sidelines. You could hear a pin drop probably. And obviously we're sitting there in a hostile environment with a game to win. And I just try to do my best to, you know, step up, you know, as a leader and pick everyone up and, you know, get everyone back focused. And we just went out there and um, took it one play at a time and just executed whatever we had to. Last one, what about playing with Kyle Pitts, the Kyle to Kyle connection? You guys became famous for it. What was that like? It was incredible. I mean, to be able to play with someone of that magnitude for the past couple of years, um, you know, it's an experience I'll never forget. And I mean, it just made everyone on the field better because he was able to, you know, open other guys up and let them blossom. And, you know, I just, I'll never forget my experience overall at, the, at Florida. You know, it's just, I had a, a ton of fun here and I'm super grateful to have this opportunity. Thank you, Kyle, and good luck to you. Thank you. Eli. Hey Kyle, don't mean to be redundant here, but I want to know more a little bit about kind of your learning style in terms of, you know, how much you, how, like what you think your relationship is with kind of sitting in the background a little bit and really taking in your environment and then making adjustments there versus kind of being in that moment 
you know, having the ball in your hands and kind of maybe making mistakes and learning. What do you think has been more advantageous to you and, you know, obviously how it relates to your next step in the NFL? Yeah, I mean, I think I'm just not afraid to ask questions. Even when I wasn't the starter, I was asking the probably the most questions in the room, even though I wasn't playing, because I'm truly trying to prepare like the starter and know every little thing, every little detail about the offense. And that way I can know like the back of my hand. I want to know every little thing about it. You know, so that way when I when I get thrown out there, I know exactly what to do. Thank you. Alan. Hey Kyle, what um you know, what's the range of questions, uh, you know, categorically that that NFL teams are throwing at you, man. I know there's football IQ stuff, but there's probably also personal stuff, man. Can you kind of uh, give us a window to the spectrum of, of what they want to know on these Zoom calls about you? Yeah, I mean, just to very briefly summarize, a lot of coaches traditionally just they want to know about you and your family growing up, um, your recruiting process, and you know, you know, maybe injuries that you had in the past, and just you know, questions about other players maybe and. Uh, really your college story and you know how you got there. I mean, you know, that's pretty much it Yeah uh, I know the story about coach Martin and Manville and sitting there But how tough was it to stay at Florida through you know a coaching change and and not think about transferring? I mean did, was there ever a, a moment where you said I'm gonna give this a week of thought during December or January about going somewhere else and and then be all in or did that really ever? You know rise to even being a possibility that you might look for a job elsewhere. No, I never really, you know, put too much thought into it. Um, I knew, you know, hopefully I'd get my opportunity eventually. Also, I didn't want to transfer when I was, you know, semester away from getting my degree. Mm -hmm. and that wasn't something that was very, you know, smart or my gut <laughs> feeling. So I went ahead and stayed one more year. You know, luckily got my opportunity to play. Well, it definitely worked out, man. Uh, congratulations and have a good drive, brother. Thank you. I'll go Zach and close with Edgar. Hey, Kyle, and just in talking with all these NFL teams throughout this process, just, just overall, just what do you feel like they like about you the most in your game? I think it's just my, you know, accuracy and ball placement and just consistency, um, anticipation. Just, you know, whenever I play, even if it's a 50-50 ball, I can make it an 80-20 ball in our favor and, you know, putting in where our guys can go make a play on it um, and just – you know, the, our ability as an offense to have such a, a presence with a vertical game and, you know, so many vertical routes and still have a, a solid completion percentage. Um, you know, that's something that really stands out that I've picked up on. Yeah. And then what about the off the field tangibles that, that you feel like they've, it's been a selling point for you? I mean, just my resiliency, really. Uh, all the hurdles that I had to face over the past couple of years and never getting discouraged and just being able to, you know, still take advantage of my opportunity when it came, uh, something that, you know, they really like. And then the most important question of the day, was you running your 40? Uh, Coach Mullen told me my best was a 498, and my uh, my goal was to get under five, so I'm happy. All right, you did it. Yes, sir. <laughs> Congrats, man. Thank you. That's faster than people think. Uh, <laughs> Uh, hey, it's, I watched Nick run about a 5'8 against a girl over in the indoor one day. Um, so what's the, uh, what do you need to show NFL teams? Because Zach, I was going to ask what you offer. What do, what do you think you really, they want to see from you? Really just, you know, what I showed today. I wanted to make sure they knew that I have a strong arm. And a lot of things that I've been hearing is that I'm, I you know, can't move and have a weak arm. So I wanted to show you know, just the opposite, that I can burst out of the pocket, that I can move around in the pocket and still be accurate. Um, and then I have a strong arm ability to make throws downfield. I mean, how does that make you feel if somebody says, yeah, he's weak and weak arm and can't move? I, I wouldn't want to hear that. <laughs> I mean, I don't really care because, I mean, I know I don't have a weak arm, so I just wanted to make sure I showed that today. Okay, and the other thing, did you have a little like clean up ankle or something? Clean up surgery, ankle. clean up. Oh no no no! Are you talking about for like the high ankle sprain and stuff? Did you have a surgery? Yeah. No no no. Yeah, I just you know it took about. I was doing rehab 
you know, after the season was over for about like eight to ten weeks to get that thing back right and, you know, back up to 100 percent. OK. All right. Well, good luck, Kyle. Thanks for all the time. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yes, sir. Thanks, Kyle. All right, man. Thanks, See y'all.